fellow romance readers, I'm Amy. And I'm Sarah, and this is Post Book Depression. You know that feeling you get when you finish a good book that you didn't want to end? Have you finished a book and just weren't ready to move on from the story and its beloved characters? You find yourself needing just a little more? This multi-trope romance podcast gives you the opportunity to dig deeper with us into books we love as we discuss all the reasons we can't move on. Feeling chatty? You can continue the conversation with us on Instagram at Post Book Depression Podcast or on Facebook in our Post Book Depression discussion group. We would be so grateful if you would subscribe to our podcast and take a moment to leave a review. Are you ready? Let's discuss. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the show. I'm Amy. And I'm Sarah. And today we're going to be discussing Hero Unbound by Jamie Crouch. The first few minutes, we're going to do a brief review of the story without any spoilers. Then we are going to shift into a deeper book discussion. That's going to include lots of spoilers, but don't worry. We're going to let you know before we do shift into that deeper book discussion. That's right. So before we dive in, Amy, tell us what the story is all about. A young woman on the run from a bad relationship has her landing in a small mountain town helping a tactical operation that teaches survival skills and using animal therapy. She has a lot of secrets, but manages to build a connection with the man who runs the business while racing against her past catching up to her. Please check your trigger warnings. Sarah, what did you think about Hero Unbound? I loved this story. There was enough mystery to it and suspense that it kept me kind of wondering where is this going to lead? Um, There's a lot of aspects that I really enjoyed about it. It was just a really good solid story. What'd you think? I absolutely agree. I love the suspense components of the story. I loved the animal portion of the story (laughs) as an animal lover. I did love that as well. So overall, it was a fabulous story in my opinion. Yes. All right, let's get into those ratings. Angst. Angst. This was surprisingly just a one for me. Okay, I I did a two. Yeah, I wasn't, I could see where you could bump it up, but I didn't feel overly angsty. I guess given the story, it could be higher. So but I'm going to stick with my one. Yeah, I feel like the angst is in the last 25%. Up until then, yeah. it was minimal. And then it just kind of built as you would expect in, sure. a, in a suspense story. All right, humor. Humor. This was like a 0.25 for me. Yeah, there I was slow as well. Like 0.5 is what I had. Yeah, there's not a lot. Mm-mm. Just little just little sprinkles yeah and not a lot of sprinkles yeah like a sprinkle (laughs) (laughs) or two (laughs) all right spiciness i was like a 1.5 same yeah yeah there's not a lot Mm -mm. it was good stuff (laughs) yeah tastefully done yes all right tears like a one same yeah no tears for me i love it just connected i know just saddened for some of the characters yes yeah what they've had to endure all right overall Overall, this was a 4.25 for me. Same. It was a really good, solid story. Gave you just enough mystery. It was a good mix of romance and angsty suspense. So I felt overall it was a a really good romantic suspense for October. So I agree. That concludes a spoiler-free quick review of the story. Now we're going to shift into a deeper book discussion, which is going to include lots of spoilers. So if you haven't read this story, please go check it out and then come back and join us on this deeper book discussion. We would love to connect with you on social media. You can find us on Instagram at Post Book Depression Podcast, on Facebook in our Post Book Depression discussion group, and you can also email us at postbookdepressionpodcast at gmail.com. We begin the story with Eva arriving in Wyoming, and it's very clear that she is running or hiding from something that's happened to her in her past. It really starts to set the groundwork for the premise of the story. She's arriving here. She's looking for a job. She doesn't have really anything. She's in her car. She has her two dogs, Sugar and Spice, which ah, I love the dog. So cute. She meets Becky at Linear Tactical. Let's begin with Becky and Eva first meeting. Yeah, when she goes into this kind of restaurant, bar thing, whatever the place is, when she is kind of looking around to find somebody that knew her family, (laughs) my intrigue was immediately piqued. Same. Because who just goes in... (laughs) Hoping to run into someone. (laughs) Uh, You might recognize me from childhood. Can I sleep on your couch? I just knew whatever she's running from has to be pretty pretty you know intense. kind of intense and she's in a dire situation she's eating peanut butter jelly sandwiches mm-hmm. which you know they can only sustain you for so long before <laughs> uh-huh. you just and she doesn't have hardly any money Mm-mm. you know 20 bucks yeah i kept thinking 
How is she going to make that last? Can you imagine? Oh my goodness. No, I just, yeah, because she can't find a place to stay. And so, yeah, she's in a dire situation, but it it hooks you right from the get-go of what is she running from? What's going on? It does pique the interest for sure. And Becky offers her a job. She starts the conversation with asking her what she's interested in. And Eva does tell her that she has a history with working with animals. And we kind of uh, start to get some curiosities about what has transpired. Mm -hmm. We don't really get that full revelation until much later. She does uh, allude to the fact that she has some some experience working in a vet. Yeah, a veterinary technician. Mm -hmm. So she kind of stops herself (laughs) because she starts to say she was a veterinarian, but then she kind of has to think. She keeps thinking to herself, not anymore. And I thought, what did you do? Uh How did you lose that job? (laughs) What has transpired? Yeah. You lose that. Becky does offer her this job at Linear Tactical as a vet tech. They Mm -hmm. have a lot of large animals, horses, things of that nature, sheep, goats, um, all of those larger animals. And so Becky is thinking, Eva's going to be perfect for the help. Her Mm -hmm. workload is very heavy. She's the only vet in the town, the small town. And with Linear Tactical, there's a lot of um, opportunity for the animals to need care there. So Eva joins on as the vet tech. We move over to our introduction of Theo our hero of the story. We start to get a lot of his background at Linear Tactical and the strategic survival techniques that they do. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of physical stuff. He, we get just a little glimpse into the fact that he had really always wanted to be in the military, but we don't know yet why he wasn't able to really complete that dream or that um, long-term career goal. And so I love the scene where he wakes up in the night and they do that scenario where they take him out into the woods Mm. and leave him there to survive these survival tactics. Yeah. That was interesting. And I thought, wow, he's got some interesting friends. <laughs> that, that was intense. That and then the story of that his sister and he and his sister were found in the woods kind of surviving. They yeah. were adopted. So there's a lot of background uh, or there's a lot with Theo's background that makes you wonder what all is going on, which I'm hoping that we get a lot more of that moving forward because I believe that there's other books that are going to be a part of the series because you kind of just get these little nuggets. I feel like the author was kind of setting up for this family and what all takes place. But yeah, what we do know of Theo, his his parents are hiding, his adoptive parents are hiding. They train people, they help people, they provide these animals there at the linear tactical for kind of, what would that be, emotional therapy? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And yeah, he's just, he's an interesting guy. <laughs> I picture him to be very rugged. I don't know oh, why. Oh, yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, with like a little bit of military look to yes. him. Yes. Very grr. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> my favorite kind of hero. One of the things that immediately had me intrigued about Eva's character as she's walking through this, you know, this massive property and taking kind of a lay of the land, scoping out different things. In her inner dialogue, she's making note of places where she can take cover, places where she could maybe spend the night with her animals, uh, places where she can stay warm ways that she can get food. I am immediately intrigued by this thought process, wondering what is she running from, first of Mm -hmm. all. But in this thought process, she notices a couple of sheds. Mm -hmm. One is a little bit more convenient to where she can hide a little bit more unseen. It doesn't have a roof leaking, things like that. She, She can be secured in this space. And the other one is a little bit more prominently viewed and not quite as nice. She takes it upon herself to move into one of these sheds on the land. And that's because she can't, like you said, she can't afford a hotel. She doesn't have anywhere and she doesn't have a first paycheck yet. So she literally has this 20 bucks to her name. It's not enough to do anything with. She's trying not to let Becky and Theo in on the fact that she can't she, afford to stay there under the impression she's staying at the local right. inn. And it's this night that Theo's house has, his house is on the property and he happens to wake up in the middle of the night and just kind of get this feeling that something's amiss. And he looks out his glass windows and notices a shadow over by this shed. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about this scene. The scene was so intense. I sat there and I thought to myself, I imagine if you are conditioned to the kind of training that he has kind of grown up, you know, practicing, Mm -hmm. I guess, that you kind of probably would have that thick sense of something's not right. But when he wakes up and then he calls his dad to make sure because they have other workers there, hey, are you on the property? No, the dad is already coming. 
you know, another woman that is a part of their team, she's on her way. When he goes, though, and they, they are, it's very impressive the way that they do <laughs> Isn't this, that it? they secure the situation. I felt kind of in my mind's eye that I was watching this movie. Uh-huh. And, but when he comes across who he does not realize is Eva, he tackles her. <laughs> yes, he does. But it was very alarming because once he tackles her, her reaction was very concerning to me mm-hmm. because she says, I didn't trip. I was tackled. I didn't trip. I was tackled. She repeats, she it, repeats it over mm-hmm. and over again. And Theo is very apologetic, doesn't really understand why she continues to say that. But he picks up on the fact that he picks that up she on is. that she's continuing to repeat that. He clears the area, lets the others know, hey, it's just Eva. She's here checking, um, that kind of thing. But man, that scene. It was intense. Yes, and it really elevated the questions in my mind of what is she running from? Mm -hmm. What has she been through that she's having this reaction to being tackled and just repeating that over and over again? He apologized. He even uh, agrees with her. Yes, I tackled her. And then when it's kind of brought to, it's late at night, it's in the middle of the night. And so she says that she was there to check on the pregnant horse. And in the end, she goes back to his house. He's going to allow her to have a shower and make food for them. Mm -hmm. She ends up falling asleep there. And that's when the local sheriff stops by and says that there was a car on the side of the road and that some, an officer had interacted with someone who they suspected might be her. And did she, I guess there was a break in. In right. town, and they're trying to figure out what she saw and things like that. Which we have to make mention that they have a very intense connection. Yes, they do. Let's so backtrack let, Let's backtrack Let's talk a about little the bit. connection. So they go on. The horse that is pregnant that she's checking on actually ends up going into labor. Yeah, so it was good that she was there. Yeah, it was great that she was there because Becky, the vet, cannot get back. She's a few hours away. So she has to deliver this horse. Theo is very impressed because she's completely calm. She's in control. She has a very different expression on her face. Her whole demeanor changes. I love that. Theo's reaction to watching her do this and his yeah. inner dialogue of wondering what is happening. This here? is a little bit more extensive knowledge mm-hmm. for somebody who's just a vet tech. Yeah. Yeah. And they have a moment. Oh, yes, they do. And then they go back to his house and they have a cuddling moment. <laughs> that turns to kissing It was moment. a little bit insta-love, it kind was. of, but I don't know that it was insta-love. I think it was insta-lust. That's what I was getting ready yeah. to say. I think they had this little insta-lust, but it seemed a bit interesting to me given the nature of her fear mm-hmm. that she's on the run, and it, I found it interesting on his end because he is very um, kind of reclusive. Mm-hmm. Doesn't really go into town. Yeah. Doesn't date much to the women in the towns, you know. <laughs> like, they're kind of upset about that. Yeah. They, they um, <laughs> want a little bit of Theo. Yeah, so before the sheriff ever gets there, they have this whole scene. Yes, they do. <laughs> then he shows up. And Theo is just kind of has her back. He knows that she's wrong on the timing mm-hmm. that he's the timeline that the sheriff is asking about, but he knows she's hiding the secrets, but he is certain she did not do whatever right. that the sheriff is claiming. Yeah, which is very interesting. I think that's very perceptive of him I think to so too. be able to read people. But yeah. given the nature of what he does, that yeah, I was going to say I think that speaks a lot to um, the nature of what he does. Sure. Becky starts to pick up on the connection that she and Theo have together, Eva and Theo. She gets this idea in her head that she's going to invite Eva out for a girl's night out. Mm -hmm. And Sarah, I found this scene so delightful. First of all, I love that Theo shows up, but he brings his backup, his entourage, to come sit with him just for the sake of observing her, not really so much of the interaction that he had planned. But this conversation between these guys where they're breaking down the type of drinks, the type the of one. drinks just had me laughing so much. And I asked myself, huh, would I, what kind of drink would I get? I, <laughs> what group of these girls would I be, would I fall under? I thought to myself, <laughs> That's not accurate for me at all. <laughs> the fruity or the light color drinks. Yeah, like the co- the more colorful they are, I thought, ew, gross. No, that would so not be me. I love that they're, you know, um, they're 
observant. They are observant. And they know which women to avoid and which women are open to flirtation, you know? (laughs) Uh, So that was funny to me. And I like that whenever Eva comes in, they observe the color of her drink, letting him know, yeah, she she just, she seemed like she was having a good time. She definitely had too much to drink and he walks her back to Becky's house. And this is where they kind of have that open conversation that Mm -hmm. she probably wouldn't have been so open about sure (laughs) had she not had so much to drink i love that he um he was mindful of that Uh and but picked up on the things that she did talk about and how she wanted to sleep with him and be intimate with him and i just thought that that scene was just it just brought a big smile to my face it was definitely the sprinkle of humor (laughs) in the story was that scene i love her internal dialogue the following morning uh, just kind of going over in her head everything she said to mm-hmm. him and kind of that cringe of, did I really <laughs> say that to him? And, oh, he must be thinking, whoo, you know, mm-hmm. that was comical. To One me. of the things that she does make note of in this moment, and I want to make note of it because it comes into factor later, is that she asks him when they finally sleep together if he will do it slow and steady uh-huh. or something along that lines. And he makes note of that. Yeah. And I want to come back when we get later into the story and talk about that um, that wording and what happens as right. we get in. A few days after this scene is when there's a big storm that's threatening, threatening to come in through town. And he's very concerned for her safety. So he wants to make sure she leaves the property to head back to the hotel before the storm begins. Mm-hmm. She assures him, yes, she will. Obviously, as the reader, we know, nope. She's planning to stay in the shed in the middle of a storm, like someone who did not think that through or is not familiar with how intense these storms get, even though he has warned her that these can get very bad. And she ends up going to the shed. And lo and behold, surprise, the shed starts leaking and it's cold and she has all these clothes. She has everything, every piece of clothing that she has on her uh, to try and stay warm. She's realizing it's not going to be safe for her and the dogs. And this is where she tries to leave and get stuck. Let's break down the scene. Oh, well, I just kept thinking, well, just leave early on, you know, (laughs) don't try to leave. At some point in your life, you've had to have witnessed even a mild storm. Mm -hmm. So I kind of felt like it was irresponsible of her to leave, especially when he's warned her that the roads will wash out. Yeah. That happens to her. Mm -hmm. I did find it really heartbreaking when she tries to get out and tries to encourage Sugar and Spice to come with her. And one of the dogs she can carry, but one of them she can't. It starts hailing on her and she gets hit in the head. Mm -hmm. She's hurt. She gets back in the car. The dogs are scared. It escalates very quickly. And she has no choice but to call Theo. Mm -hmm. She spins a story that he believes. Right. But he is very curious to why are the dogs wet if they never got out of the vehicle. This is very bizarre. She's All of her clothes are wet. She is so soaked through that he doesn't understand why she's as wet as she is if she just briefly got out. It isn't until he gets her back to the place that he is taking her clothes to dry them that he thinks, this is a lot of clothing. Mm -hmm. Like, a lot of clothing. What in the world? And he is starting to get the pieces slowly but surely. There's more going on. However, it isn't until the next day when he goes to get her car that he can see the way her car was turned. She was not she had been there leaving the property. She or she w- was not coming back. She was leaving. One thing I want to make note of in this scene when she has hit her head, there's the confusion that she has thinking she hurt herself based on the wording that mm-hmm. Theo says, you hurt yourself. and Or she said, did I hurt myself? And he says, yes. But his meaning was because she was in the storm, she right. she accidentally got hurt. Not that she purposefully hurt herself. And that comes into play with some of the stuff we're going to get into with Gareth and her ex um, and the gaslighting that he does here in just a minute. It is in the guest house after she's cleaned up, they've eaten. This is where she opens up a little bit about Gareth hurting her dogs. She was in this relationship. Let's just go ahead and shift over into Gareth and let's talk about him and what has transpired between her and Eva. And just kind of let's let's kick off uh, this part of the conversation. After she opens up about Gareth and how he hurt her dogs, her and Theo end up being intimate together mm-hmm. um, there in the house. And Theo very quickly picks up on 
some trauma that mm-hmm. she's been a part of. And he's trying to be very sensitive to that when they are intimate. And this is where bringing back that conversation earlier that she had when she was drunk and she asked him if he would go slow and steady. He's very mindful of that in this moment. He can very clearly see that she has suffered from some type of abuse mm-hmm. and trauma. And he wants to be very mindful of that. Right. Because she kind of flipped it around and changed how she said she wanted things to be. And he said, well, maybe another time. But for tonight, can we try? I loved him in that moment. Steady. She definitely, I, I found it very concerning. And I was thankful for him because he, there's a few times that he questions, you know, we should stop. Let's stop. Mm-hmm. And maybe let's not take this any further. And I wasn't really sure how that was going to progress, honestly, because I I thought, man, you can tell this woman has had some trauma. I don't know that you should move forward with yeah, any kind of intimacy I had the same with thought her. too. Ultimately, he does, and we wouldn't have the story that we have without it, but it was a little bit concerning for me, for him, mm-hmm. honestly, and yeah. for her as well. But like, do you know what you're doing? This woman has some you know, scars. Yeah. And she does open up a little bit about that enough for him to recognize that she has some mental health struggles because he does have a conversation with his mom the following Mm -hmm. morning because his mom also has suffered from that. And so I love that he has his mom as a good ally and resource for that. Let's go back to Gareth Mm -hmm. and talk about, let's spend just a few minutes talking about the gaslighting that he does with Eva. This was a very interesting form of abuse. We've we've read a few stories in the past where it's physical. Mm-hmm. I've never read one where the main source of abuse was gaslighting. And I'll be completely honest, I didn't fully understand exactly what that would look like in a relationship. Mm-hmm. I've heard the term, I've heard people say, oh, they're gaslighting you. But I didn't fully understand what that could look like until this. Friend, this was scary. Yes, it was. It was the manipulation that he has and the hold he had over Eva when they were together, the fact that he could convince her so easily to the point where she is legitimately confused about, well, did it happen this way? Yeah. Was very concerning to me. I had no idea that that was really how gaslighting works Mm -hmm. to the point that the person is questioning reality. Kind of like brainwashing. It is. Yeah. And I didn't know it went so deep into that. I I really didn't. I kind of felt naive actually reading this. So it was enlightening to me because I guess I just, I didn't really, I mean, I knew that gaslighting is like, oh, that's not okay. Yeah. But I didn't know that it could get to that. Yeah. I didn't know that it could make a person completely question reality. I completely agree with that. I wasn't in the same boat as you. And it wasn't really until, because you're wondering through a lot of this story, what happened to her memories? Why can't she right. remember what happened? I don't understand why she's not remembering things. And Theo's feeling the same way that you are as a reader. And I loved the conversation later that he has with his mom and dad specifically about this because he's to the point he's not sure if he can trust uh-huh. what she says. And the mom tells Theo, your gut, you know, trust your gut, first of all. She says she doesn't remember. Have you ever considered to ask yourself why? Why doesn't she? Has she been brainwashed? Mm -hmm. There's got to be a legitimate reason why she's struggling with her memory so bad. And this was after, you know, the the pictures on her social media. There was a lot of evidence stacked against her. Mm -hmm. And I can see why someone from the outside looking in would be led to believe that she um, she had done the things that she was accused of. Right. It was just very alarming. And then the part that was really hard for me as a reader to because you know, it's hard with her, but to know that he harmed her animals to get Mm -hmm. her to... That emotional manipulation. Mm -hmm. ...made me physically ill because her dogs are obsessed with her. They love her. They stay by her. They want to be near her. The fact that they are receptive to Theo or to even others is a big deal, kind of blows her mind. And when we find out that he broke their... I know. I, I could Well, that scene with the bunny rabbit. No. I. Oh, Sarah, Amy. Oh, I was. I almost quit the book. I'm like, if he snaps the rabbit's neck, I'm out of here. I'm not. I'm not finishing the story. <laughs> I it can't. was. So yeah, if you've read the book, you know Gareth is kind of puts her hands around mm-hmm. the bunny. That was he so comes back. He finds oh. her. We have to acknowledge Gareth at this point, to our knowledge, 
And to her knowledge, he doesn't know where she is. But mm-hmm. he continuously texts and call, calls her every single day. She ignores it. And then at one point, she answers a phone call. It's Wyoming, which I'm it's thinking. It's a local, if I know. If you're running, number. you don't answer. You don't answer for numbers. You don't even you don't keep know. your same phone. You get rid of no. your phone. <laughs> well, she, I mean, what I know, was she, she going to do? Money. And And so that was alarming. But it's Gareth. And mm-hmm. he's out. And all I could think was, honey, he knows where you're at. Mm-hmm. He's in the same town. You know, it, this isn't yeah. This isn't a coincidence. This guy has known this whole time. Yeah. And so, yeah. And then he comes and then he tries to strangle a bunny with her hands. It's very upsetting. It's let's very, move on. <laughs> yes, let's move on from yeah, the Gaslighting bad. <laughs> animal abuse. Horrible. Let's go to something else. Let's back up a bit to Theo's dream of going into the military and the reasons for him not being able to do that. We learned that there was a some situations with his extended family mm-hmm. that prevented him from going into the military. He had to end up keeping him and his immediate family had to kind of change their identities and keep those hidden to protect the people that he loved. And so he does open up about the fact that he was never able to fulfill his dream of going into the military. Right. He was going to. He didn't fully understand the extent of the danger that his family has kind of hanging over their heads. And he is full on going to go. But his mom comes to him and lets him know, I just want you to know we won't be able to be in contact with you anymore. I love you, but we have to go into hiding somewhere else if you choose to do this. And he can't do it. He comes home because he doesn't want to put his family at risk. What a I sacrifice. I am dying to know what that story is. Mm-hmm. I need more. <laughs> I need them to go back in time and give me the parent story. Mm-hmm. I don't need to just move forward. I need to know why the parents. <laughs> it's great if you like can write another story and you, we find out. But I would really like to know. I would like to see that from the beginning. Because, I mean, she, they make mention that his mom tried to kill his dad. Oh, you yes. Know? Yeah. <laughs> like she was not in her right frame of mind. So I think that'd be an interesting story. Just, I think it you would. Know, just if you think you should write that, go for it. <laughs> yeah. But it was kind of heartbreaking because that's kind of a common thing that they have. We know throughout the story, Eva keeps referencing she's not a vet anymore. Mm-hmm. She's not a vet anymore. Nobody knows that she was actually a vet um, and not just a vet tech. And she can relate to him that... Y- not being able to fulfill your dream, mm-hmm. lifelong dream. And although he doesn't understand that they ha- share that connection, he just thinks she should totally go back to school and become yeah. a vet. But it's it's interesting that she feels that connection with him, even though he doesn't realize they shared that. You mentioned that Gareth finds her in the town, and he's starting to make connections with people around this small town. And kind of wreaking havoc in the meantime, he catches her car on fire. None of this is proven until much later, but, and that's, her livelihood when that happens it's very traumatic and this is kind of a moment where theo he realizes the impact of losing Mm -hmm. the car and and what it means because at this point he knows she's homeless Mm -hmm. she's homeless and of course there's the um the the scenario where she he knocks her off of the ladder and puts her into the hospital and she tries to stand up for herself and let people know that he did that but he's covered his tracks with the how clever. The they think that she sabotaged her car, even though she didn't have insurance. <laughs> they think that she just kind of played it in her mind, which the sheriff kind of annoys me a little bit. And this, I understand he's just doing his job, but he is a bit annoying because he has a tendency to keep coming back mm-hmm. at her. The one where they did not see him on the screen because he knew where the cameras were. That to me was just creepy. And but the, the I also fact that the fact that Gareth had done something to her pants, like this little screw on yes, the Yes, that yeah. he was able to put that was creepy. But I mean, a guy who walks into town and buys every girl coffee is a weirdo <laughs> anyway. <laughs> right? Like, okay, you're a little bit obsessed. Stop. It's weird. There's a scene towards the end where he has manipulated Eva into coming with him. He's basically kidnapping her. He's trying to get her to come back to him. And there's a little bit of a confrontation between he and Theo in the coffee shop. Theo has the wherewithal to toss his cell phone into the car at the last second. So there's a tracking device happening so they can track. So let's focus a little bit on this kidnapping situation and the rescue mission. I felt really heartbroken for Eva because she's kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place because he is threatening her dogs that he will 
kill her dogs, that they will no longer be a problem. And she says, please just let me leave them here. I will come with you. I won't fight you, but just let me leave my dogs here. That is the key to Theo realizing that something is amiss because she would never leave her dog. Mm -hmm. That is what prompts him to toss his phone in. I love his cousin. Is it his cousin? It's his cousin, isn't it? Lincoln? Yeah. Or is his friend? Is his friend or friend, cousin? Friend cousin. Yeah. There were, he's cousin to somebody. Anyway, <laughs> um, that he knows all this stuff. There's the a, government keeps trying to hire him, but he won't. There's a, the part, I just want to back up quickly, since you mentioned Lincoln, where he offers to do a detailed background check on her, and he says, no, she wants me to know. It will come to light. And I, I wrote in my notes... Would I be that way or would I really want to know? I'm not sure what I would do if I was put in that situation. If I was wanting to get to know somebody, would I have someone do the dirt or would I wait for them to come in to In this me? day and age, Amy, <laughs> I want the dirt. I, I want, want the dirt. all the dirt, <laughs> every bit of the dirt. And I'm very upfront with people like that I'm close to and love. So once we get to a place where I feel good about it, <laughs> I'll let them know, hey, I got all the dirt on you because I want to make sure you're not a psychopath. <laughs> Just FYI. But um, no, I love Lincoln because he just already has it tracking. And mm -hmm. it was this is the part where the angst comes in. Like yeah. you said, the last 25%. Amy, when I say that this guy is insane, he he takes abuse to like kind of serial killer <laughs> level a little bit. Uh -huh. Like, dude's got this cabin in the woods. I was like, well, that's a little bit like serial killer of you. Not saying that Gareth is, but he, <laughs> he could be going down that road. I mean, it feels like I a agree. good track. And he's very obsessive. Yeah, when he like has her dress yeah. planned for her and she's already physically ill because she knows what that entails. Oh, yeah. And he has this dinner. Steak dinner. I was just so proud of her when she stabbed him. Oh, Not yeah. that I'm a stabby person. <laughs> in, you know? In this situation, I think I would be a stabby person. But in this situation, <laughs> it feels like stabbing is the way to go. You know, maybe more with a little bit more accuracy. <laughs> uh, that made me nervous. But uh, she starts running for yes, her she life. Does. What was so sad, though, is that she thinks no one's coming for her mm -hmm. because she thought Theo didn't come up to the hospital. She thought that he was done with her, mm -hmm. that he couldn't deal with all of the things in her life. And I love whenever Gareth gets her and it's very intense and he comes up. And then all of the tactical team comes up and she has people. What was sad was hearing Theo's point of view of that, realizing the point, the shock on her face, because she truly thought she was alone. Uh -huh. She did not think oh, yeah. he was coming for her. And I love his thought process of, well, we're going to have to fix that, that she can't be thinking that way. Yes. I love that they take, you know, they take Gareth down. I love that the sheriff follows them knowing witnessed that witnessed it all mm -hmm. witnessed it all that gareth is crazy now i think you should let the people know what gareth really was doing uh -huh. on top of all the gaslighting to create her memory loss and confusion yeah he what had been all this time well let me back up and say we do learn that her vet license she failed her vet exam right. well she was accused of cheating on it and she confessed and she confessed and throughout this whole story i'm wondering why would she confess like what has happened so we learn that gareth all of this time has been injecting her with this basically a memory fog or a memory um suppressant mm -hmm drug that's keeping her in the dark on what has happened. Her memories are unclear. She doesn't have um, clear recollection of things that she's done. And she he manipulates that into telling her what she's done so that she starts to believe these things. Um, it's brainwashing in like the most elevated way. It's terrifying because he was a doctor mm -hmm. and he's obtaining this drug illegally. The links that some people will go to to keep people under their control really freak me it's out. It's scary. It's scary to me because his whole explanation for it was, it was going to take you away from our family. Like, dude. Yeah, he's already isolated her. She doesn't have a relationship with her family. She hasn't talked to them in years. Like, he has... No. He has isolated her from everyone. What is sad is her mother originally, when they started dating, tried to tell her, 
something is off with this man. And she completely shut it down mm-hmm. and did not want to listen. I would say, yeah, something's something's wrong with Gareth. Yeah, I didn't expect I didn't expect the drug injections of her to be the reason for her memory loss. I, and even the photos we talked about the photos of the social media he had, you know, photoshopped all of that. So and creepy. It was very creepy. This was just next level gaslighting in in the worst way. And what is so amazing to me is that would Theo know any of this without Lincoln? I know. <laughs> That's a great point. Because he's the one that discovered all of the social yes, media he stuff. He's the one that discovered that he was injecting her with stuff. See, it helps to have people really smart like <laughs> that the <laughs> government is trying to contract, you know, to get them on their side. Amy, we need to find this friend in we our do. life. We do. Not that we intend I mean, on having I've, like I've, worked, I've watched in our life. enough shows. I might could, you know, pull it off myself on the dark web. <laughs> we Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding, just kidding. We've read, read a lot of books. We know things. We know what not to do, but I yeah. think if that was a real life situa- situation, we would probably forget everything we've ever read. <laughs> I love Theo's dedication to her, though, and his just his love for her in that he wants to try and find out what's happening, and he goes to Lincoln and finds all of this. Let's move over into her healing, her taking the test, the HEA. All, let's wrap up our chat with this. Yeah, so they, they decide to become an item. He stays with her during the time that she needs to kind of go to therapy and work through everything that she's been through. She's obviously experienced a lot of trauma. And um, I love that she's able to go and retest. I love that she did it on her own. Me too. But I loved even more that when she came home, they had that celebration for her. They just knew she was going to pass. They knew she was well, going to pass. Well, they did have someone call. But. Yeah. No, Lincoln. <laughs> yeah. He like. Oh, yeah. So, so to be able to check in. He got and, the results. And just to know. But um, it was really kind of just amazing because, you know, she got her life back and her and dream. And a support of, system. And a support system. She wants to reconcile her with her family. Yeah. And her brother. And it, it was a really great story. It had just enough suspense. Mm-hmm. It had enough mystery. Had a crazy guy that we never want to meet. <laughs> True. And it has a male main character that is just very, you know, heartfelt. very heartfelt and rugged. And <laughs> it was good. You should story. see Star- Sarah's <laughs> face right now, y'all. I'm clearly picturing my husband. <laughs> oh, anyway, it's a great story. Thank you for joining us on this discussion of Hero Unbound. We hope you enjoyed it and you want to continue the conversation with us. You can hit us up on Instagram at Post Book Depression Podcast or on Facebook at our Post Book Depression Discussion Group. You can also email us at postbookdepressionpodcast at gmail.com. Until next time, keep reading.